I think the next logical thing that we would like to do is probably make these into a link to the actual uh, site. So let's come in here and we're going to need to reformat some of this. Let's put some parentheses around here. You'll see why in just a second. Um, we're going to say link to, I don't need that last one. Um, and this is a Rails helper. Actually, both of these are Rails helpers. But link to is a Rails helper that creates a link to a site based on uh, some stuff we give it. So this first bit, it creates the text for the link. And then the second thing that we're going to put after the comma is actually going to give us the link. So we're going to do HTTP. And then we're going to do a string interpolation. And we're going to pass in the website name. So let's go check out and see if this works. So if we refresh the page, oh, apparently they just updated some stuff. So if we click on Reign of Bombs, it's going to take us to CNN.com, and here we go, Reign of Bombs. So let's go back, and what I'd like you to do is actually open that in a new tab. So I'm going to put a comma after this and say target, target colon and then underscore blank and see if this does it. Yeah, so target underscore blank is how you make stuff open up in new tabs and that is actually an HTML attribute and you can pass that in with a colon and then the thing in quotes after you put a comma. So anyway, so that does that. Now, the next thing we would probably like to do is actually style these a little bit better because right now it's not really that cool. Um, so let's do that. So I'm back on the Bootstrap page and here we can see everything that we need to know to get started. Uh, we don't actually need to do a lot of this because we've already done it with the gym. But we can go ahead and start using the CSS that they give us. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do a little bit of that. Um, there's a lot of stuff here. There's a lot of really cool stuff. Um, so let's just jump in. First thing I want to do is get this stuff lined up right. Um, so div class equals container. And I'm going to grab all of this stuff and go ahead and just put it in the middle. Now, what I'm doing now is I'm going through and I'm going to just add some HTML code with uh, some classes. And what that does is when we give it certain classes, there's um, CSS that's already been written inside the Bootstrap framework that's going to take these classes and interpret them to do certain things. So if we come back now and we refresh just with that class container, it's going to bump everything into kind of a more middle area. And I don't know, you can see as I drag in, it kind of bumps. The container resizes, it's kind of responsive. So that's good. Um, there's a lot of stuff in here, um, so go through if you want to, to and look. I'm going to do probably some more in-depth stuff on Bootstrap later. For now, I'm just going to start adding some stuff and get this to look nice. Um, I'm going to pause the video, add a few things, and then I'll walk you through it. All right, so I'm back, and I have added a few classes to this thing, and kind of gotten this to look a little nicer. It's not the coolest thing I've ever seen, but it'll do for now. So let's come back and let me show you what I've done so far. So what I've done is just repackaged what I've had, what we had here before into some new HTML structure with some added classes. So I've got my header here. I added a page header class on it in a div wrapped around it. I added this span class equals glyph icon, glyph icon dash dashboard. Let's talk about that first. So the header, uh, what that does is it 
creates this section up top with an underline so that it's kind of a separated header and the glyph icon is this. Um, you have access to all of these different glyph icons um, for whatever you want um, with Bootstrap. You can do some pretty cool stuff with them. This isn't the best use, but you know, it's all right. The next thing, um, I've got this div class equals row with this call small eight inside it. This is a really sophisticated thing and I encourage you to go look at this. But what this is, this is part of the bootstrap um, grid system. Now, as you can see, this is a little bit sophisticated and I'm not gonna explain the entire thing here, but basically, um, at a very high level, there are 12 columns in the bootstrap grid and you first need to declare that you're using a row and then you can say how many columns of the 12 you want this to take up. So for instance, I'm using eight and you can see that it takes up about uh, two thirds of the page. If I want, I can come in here and make this, let's say 12 and it's going to take up the rest of the page. But I'm going to add something else on the right in a minute. So I'm going to leave it at 8. Now, we're each, for each one of these things, we're iterating through. And I really just copied and pasted this code about panels from Bootstrap. So if you come back um, and we go up to the top and we look at components. And then over here, I decided this was a panel. And you can see we have this panel with title that we're using. Um, and I copied and pasted this and then put my stuff inside it. And it's really that simple. Now, obviously, you're very rarely going to build a site just based entirely on bootstrap stuff. You're going to want to customize it. And I'm going to show you where you can do that in a minute. Um, but anyway, um, so let's think about what we'd want to change. The first thing that I notice is that I don't like these little dots out here. Um, I don't like how it's not lined up with this left side either. So I'm going to show you how I uh, go through and can kind of mess with this. This is the way that I typically do this sort of thing. So because I have some experience, I know those dots are coming from the unordered list. And I know that I can fix that by going in here and saying, actually, let's do it on. So in case you've never seen this before, um, I'm selecting the unordered list here. And then I can look over on the right side in Chrome and see you know, the different styles that are on here and where they're coming from. This element dot style, if I, if I put something in there, it's only going to apply to just this element, which is actually fine in this case because we're dealing with the whole unordered list. Um, sometimes you might want to be dealing with all the unordered lists on the page, which would be here. Um, anyway, so what I want to do is say list style none, and those dots go away. Um, to get it lined up on the left, I know that this unordered list is giving it a margin or it's bumping it over. I'm going to bump it over minus 40 pixels and it'll line up just right. Okay, so now I want to put these in the code, and there's a variety of ways that you can do this. I'm going to kind of cheat and do this the easiest way I can think of, which is just dropping it right here in application.css. Um, we have not talked about CSS, and basically you have a few ways to do this. You can give it a tag name, a class name, or an ID. And in this case, I just want this to apply to unordered list in general, so I'm just going to paste it right in here. And this is the syntax for CSS. You can do UL, curly braces, and then pass in your stuff. Or, you know, list an attribute and then a value. Um, the class name would be something like class, and then this, and then ID. You give it a pound sign, and then whatever the ID is. So if the class was container, I would do that. If the ID was frog, I would do that and then I would give it my values and it would apply to everything that has that ID or that container. Anyway, this is good enough for now. Save it um, and refresh the page. And it looks just like we want it to. I'm gonna come back and do some more stuff about CSS and Bootstrap and maybe even design in a later course. 
Um, I haven't been able to focus on that here because I'm really just trying to throw you into the deep end and expose you to a ton of different stuff. And as I've mentioned before, all of the different things that I'm showing you can be, and in fact are, courses by themselves, entire 500 page books. So a lot of you have asked me for you know more lessons about specific things, and I'm planning to do that, um, but it is tricky because you could spend weeks just talking about CSS, but what I'm more interested in is helping you get started doing everything all at once, which is pretty tricky. So um, let me know if you have any other ideas or feedback about how to do that, but this is the best way that I've come up with so far, is just showing you things and um, letting you go and mess with it from there. Anyway, let's go on and let's do this weather stuff on the right hand side that I did at the very beginning and uh, then we'll be done with this. All right. so the first thing I want to do is come over to weather.com and I'm at weather slash today slash 10005 for New York. Okay, so what do we do earlier? Let's go look. Um, so if we check our schema, uh, we've got web weather weathers, I guess that's the weathers table. We've got a link and we've got a zip code. So I think we actually could have done that a little bit differently, but I'm just going to keep going with it. Um, this is going to show you how there's really a lot of ways you can do things, and I actually can think of a better way already to do it, but this is fine. So let's go back to our app, weathers, and then a new weather uh, feels kind of awkwardly titled also. So I'm going to paste this in. I'm going to chop that off and go 10005. Also don't want the HTTP at the beginning. Um, and really don't need the www dot either. Okay, so I'm going to create this. Okay, now from here, what I want to do is really similar to what we did with the website. So what I really want to do, let's go back to the home page or root path. I think what we really want is to display the weather over here in this right column, maybe the current weather, um, maybe really just like weather channel, you know, right now and tonight. I don't think we're really earlier today. Um, so let's see. Let's go back to the view and let's kind of work backwards from there. So if we go to index, the first thing we're going to do is create a new div with a column that's four, or a class that's four columns wide. Okay. Now, um, let's do another unordered list. Uh, let's see. Um, you know, maybe what we'll do actually is um, create weathers for different cities. Maybe I have several cities where I want to know what the weather is. That I don't know if it's useful, but it seems a little more interesting to me. Um, so let's do at weathers dot each do weather. And then we always end these ERB tags. And let's print out weather dot uh, zip code. And actually, let's do this. Let's do something fancier. Let's do city and then uh, current. Let's, let's just start there. Let's just start there. Now we're going to refresh and it's going to break. Perfect. 